Greetings, everybody. I thank my Lord Jesus Christ that he has given me the ability to record videos and to share messages of the gospel on this channel to reach as many people as possible. Um, and I just pray that this video subject today will encourage you guys and also bless you and just point you to Jesus that he can save your soul and he can deliver you from anything. Suicide and depression was something that I was going through uh, severely last year. Uh, I finished a 40 day fast in which I felt extremely powerful. Um, the Lord just convicted my heart. I was hearing more clearly of the Lord, like that fast was incredible. And I really thank God because I, I felt like I really got closer to the Lord and um, just God just revealed a lot about myself, about the future and everything like that. But after the fast, it's like, I believe the enemy just saw how much progress I was making and I got attacked immediately. Um, during that time, I lost my car, um, so I, I became carless. Uh, I got in a lot of financial debt. All of a sudden, it's like, I just felt like money was being robbed away from me at that point. Um, my other YouTube channel, uh, the Brooklyn Tokyo channel that I'm currently doing full time, it wasn't doing the best. So we were struggling a little bit financially there too. And, you know, constantly trying to find the next hit video it was very stressful as well. And I believe during that time, God was taking me through a season where he was starting to expose a lot of the hidden trauma, the hidden struggles and things I haven't released to him yet because God was telling me that promotion was coming soon. But the very thing you want to be careful about as a Christian is that you don't get promoted before your time because there could be a lot of things that God wants to deal with inside of you first before he gives you promotion because it's better to deal with your past now than to deal with it later on when you have more responsibilities, more stuff going on, and it could be even a harder fight for deliverance. As we've seen many times, there's Christians who have fell in sin because they haven't dealt with things that um, already before they got promoted. So I just believe in that time, God was allowing these attacks to just expose what's, what was inside of me. And the biggest thing I dealt with in my life was rejection and abandonment. Um, in my life, I've been rejected by my family. I've been rejected by friends. I've been abandoned by my family. Um, even I've been church hurt a lot. People in, in ministry or people in church, you know, I've been definitely burned. Uh, people who gossip behind your back, people who talk crap about you, you know, people who are never, don't oh, don't ever seem there for you when you really need them. And um, a lot of these things I was carrying since I was a kid. I remember even when I first got saved in high school, it was it was a lonely time because it seemed like I was really the only one on fire for God. A lot of the Christians around me were very carnal or they weren't at the level where I was spiritually, in which like I was just passionate about souls. I was passionate about preaching. I was just passionate about God. And a lot of times, even for Christians, if you're too passionate or too holy, as some would say, it ends up offending people and people just don't like you for some reason. And I was also in a household which my family wasn't saved. I was the only born again believer in my household. And then from that, it's like, you know, Satan uses even the closest people to you to try to get to you. And I remember there's a lot of spiritual attacks that came within my family from outside my family. Um, and I'll probably go into details more in a different video, but let's just say like I've been rejected a lot. I've been abandoned a lot. And even from not growing up with my father, I felt rejected by not having a father in my life. And even when I became an adult around 23, 24, I really started noticing the ramifications of not having a male figure to really show me how to be a man. And there's a lot of times where like, you know, it's not until now where I haven't had the best relationship with my father. And every time I would continue with getting contact with me, it was like, you know, it was complaining like why I never call him, whatever. And in my, and, and in my mind, I'm like, you're my dad. You're, you're, you're supposed to be the one calling me. So there was a lot with that too. Like I had a lot of resentment towards him and towards my, my family as well. But I thank God that he's healed my heart and um, I've learned to forgive um, and just uh, release them because it wasn't doing me any good. And one thing about rejection is that you end up rejecting yourself and people who deal with reject rejection abandonment, they tend to try to find something to validate their existence. That's why a lot of people will try to find validation in the opposite sex. Men who've been rejected, they end up be very, uh, being very addicted to pornography or sex or trying to get approval from women. For women, it's the same thing, trying to get approval from men, especially if you didn't grow up with a father as a girl as well. And from that, I really wanted to be successful because to me, 
to validate my existence, to prove that I'm worth something. I wanted to be very successful. I wanted to be someone influential. And I believe that was a calling on God already in my life, but I kind of perverted it in which I wanted to say, hey, look at you guys. I became this big person and you rejected me. But look, I, I, I proved myself that I'm better than you or like I'm worth something. All the people who doubted me, all the people who abandoned me, look at me now, I'm this big guy. And look what you, you missed out. It's kind of like I wanted revenge or, you know, to finally just get approval from people and being successful. I wanted money. I wanted success. I wanted influence. I wanted all that stuff. So what was happening was that the enemy was kind of using that to get at me because I was in a bad state. I mean, I'm struggling financially. I don't have a car. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of people around me don't value me. A lot of people, you know, put me in a box. You know, they, they see me a certain way and they don't allow me to, uh, you know, show that I've grown over the years. I'm not just a little kid that you knew me from, you know, high school or middle school that, you know, I just, I was just around a lot of people who didn't value me at all. So that made things worse. So the enemy and just implanted thoughts in my head, like, look at you, you're not where you want to be. Uh, you know, you're a loser. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, people don't respect you. They only respect you if you have money, if you have influence. And then I was in this rat race to become successful. Like that was my main motivation. But because I was in that season of hardship and just looking at where I want to be and looking at where I am, it just made me extremely depressed, extremely depressed. And also combined with the fact that like, you know, I, I, and I don't want to make it sound like I didn't have people helping me because there's a lot of people. I thank God. I thank God for my pastor. I thank God for my spiritual father, Dr. Kruger, uh, Terrence Kruger. He was there a lot in my life. I had, you know, uh, Christian friends who uh, really prayed for me, and encouraged me. So I'm not going to act like, you know, I was in the season completely by myself. But it was very hard. It was very hard. Um, to the point where uh, I started resenting my life. I started believing life was hard. You know, I, I started, you know, doubting the promises God made to me. And they got so bad to the point where I, I owned a gun. And um, there, were there was times in my room where I would literally point the gun to my head. And I would just be wondering, like, man, I wonder if life would be better if I just blew my brains out. And it was so bad to the point where I actually, a friend had to help me sell my gun away because I was in such a bad state of depression that um, I think if I kept that gun, I would have shot myself in the head. Um... And I, 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 the one thing about depression is that what the enemy does is that he starts putting plant, uh, planting thoughts in your head that maybe it would be better if you were dead. Maybe all the suffering, all this pain will go away as soon as you die. You know, not having to deal with people, not having to deal with life, not having to feel like life is always a struggle. And I also found myself listening to a lot of music that was, uh, kind of uh, displaying how I felt. Like I was into a lot of Tupac. I was in a lot of Eminem. When I think about Tupac and Eminem, they're prime examples of young men who've been rejected and them trying to find some value in their life. Tupac, very angry. Eminem, very angry. It was kind of funny because I was listening to Tupac's song, uh, Death Around the Corner. And I literally felt like the spirit of death was just trying to take me out, was trying to choke me out spiritually. And it was trying to get me to a place where like I finally like ended myself. Uh, but I thank God. <laughs> I thank God that I'm still here. So really and truly, the rejection and the abandonment was a root. And then everything else I was dealing with, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, came from that rejection that I had faced since I was a kid. And the problem was is that I was building my identity on other things instead of God. I was building my identity on like, hey, I got to be successful. I have to be rich. I have to have my own place. Like I, I was starting to, that's where I was basing my value in. Like if I'm not the successful person, then I'm not valuable. But for Christians, and it's crazy that I've been, I've been born again for over a decade. And it's not until recently where I fully am grasping this, that my identity is found that God created me for a purpose. And my identity is found in Jesus. It's not found in what people think of me. It's not found what my family thinks of me. It's not found in what females or society thinks of me. It's found in Jesus. And even though it was a rough season, it took a lot of prayer, a lot of fighting. But it's like I finally said, God, I understand that I'm, I'm, I'm thinking wrong. I understand that I'm putting my hope in things that are going to fail me at the end. That only really God gives me value. And that's in 
that's a stable foundation to build your identity on because what happens if you don't have money? What happens if people stop liking you? What happens if you're not influential anymore? Then you're not valuable anymore. But if my value is in Jesus, that's everlasting. That will never change. And once I started understanding that, it's like, I felt like a freedom that I haven't felt in years. I'm talking about years because I was in bondage for a very long time. And to me as a creative person, I recognize a lot of people in, in the industry, a lot of people in entertainment. There are people who've been rejected too. I look at people like Will Smith. I look at people like Jay-Z, you know, and Eminem Tupac, like I mentioned. I was listening to J. Cole, Kanye West. A lot of these young, you know, these people have been rejected. And they're just trying to find a way to find value in their lives by being successful, by being this rich person. Um, and I realized like a lot of creatives, they use that trauma as fuel or motivation to get success. And I would, I'll probably make a video on that too, but I re I was recognized like, yeah, trauma can motivate you. But the problem is, even if you get what you desire, you're still a broken person inside. And if we know, we know clearly that just having money and fame doesn't heal your heart. If that was the case, then there would be no rich person that would commit suicide. But we know rich people commit suicide all the time. And another tip that I started recognizing was that you are what you think. If you're always meditating on how horrible your life is, things always seem to be going wrong. I was rejected by this person, that person, my family. You're going to become what you think. The Bible says, whatever a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you believe you're a victim, you believe no one likes you, then it's true. And your mind is like soil. It doesn't matter what you plant weeds, you plant marijuana, you plant apple or orange trees, whatever you plant in soil is going to grow. So your mind is like soil. So whatever you're meditating on at the moment is what's going to bear fruit. It's, it's what's going to manifest in your life. So for me, I had, like the Bible says in the Psalms, like I encouraged myself in the Lord. I had to start encouraging myself that I believe that God, I'll receive all the promises that God has for me. I'll receive the blessings. I'll receive the breakthrough. I believe that God loves me. He hasn't abandoned me. For the Bible says, uh, as long as I live, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. So even in the midst of my darkness, even in the midst of, you know, my depression and suicidal thoughts, like God was with me. And I had to learn to stop, me stop meditating on what's going wrong and meditate what's going right. I'm alive. I'm breathing. I got clothes on my back. I got a roof over my head. I, I, can, I can walk. I can work out. I, I can talk. I don't have some serious medical condition, which I'm, I'm limited in some way. Like, I, I'm, I'm thankful for that. I have a church home that uh, that loves me, that I have pastors that hear from the Holy Spirit, that I have people that care about me. I just started just focusing on the good and stop focusing on the, on the negative because that's what the enemy wants you to do is focus on everything that's going wrong or all your problems and you start glorifying it. Then you make your problems bigger than God then it's no wonder why you don't believe when God says he can heal you. You don't believe when God says he can deliver you. You don't believe when God says he can love you because you're not meditating on that. The Bible says medit meditate on his word day and night so it won't depart from you, you know? But anyway, I, I don't want to make this video too long, but ultimately um, that was a, I've had periods of depression in my life, but last year was the biggest fight I've had where I've even had demons manifest and I, People, people are nuts, but like Christians can't have demons. They can't because demons res reside in the soul of a person, not the spirit of a person. The Holy Spirit resides in your spirit, man, while demons reside in your soul. And if your soul is broken, if you're sinning, you're opening doors for demonic activity to enter you and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, I just thank God that I'm free. I thank God that I'm delivered. And uh, again, I'm not perfect. God is still, you know, um, you know, dealing with me and helping me to get freed and dealing with other areas of my life. But um, really, to end this video, uh, I would say that if you're dealing with suicide and depression, understand that God loves you and that your life has meaning. Because a big thing with depression, depression is that you've lost hope. And God can give you back hope that your life has meaning. That the Bible says all things work together for the good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. So everything is working out for your good. Even the things that don't seem like it is. It is. So you have to believe that God died for you. God loves you. And that he wants to do amazing things in your life. And that this is not the end for you. That bigger things are coming to you. And God has bigger things in store for you. So uh, be filled with hope. Be filled with hope. In Jesus name. <laughs> I hope this video encouraged you guys. Thank you guys for watching. 
and um, I will see you guys in the next video. So, peace. Thank you.